Hello everybody and welcome to my review of volume number one of Yoshino Origuchi's light novel series Monster Girl Doctor. This one is released by Seven Seas. Uh, now this has three volumes out in Japan. I believe it's still ongoing at this time. It is written from a third person point of view and it follows a doctor Glenn, who is in a city called Lindworm. Now, this story is sort of set in an alt reality where monsters and humans exist in this world and have been at war with each other for over a hundred years, so long that most people don't even remember why. In any case, when this book takes place, it has been 10 years since peace has sort of finally been declared between these two parties. And the city of Lindworm sort of exists right on the border between sort of the human and monster territory. And so this city has become sort of an emblem of the peace because it has both monster and human residents. Glenn, who is a human, is one of the first ever humans trained to be a doctor for monsters. And so this book begins to follow his journey as he treats the monsters within this city. It's sort of set in, a, like it feels kind of like a 19th century, early 19th century type uh, story in terms of the city itself. Uh, we still have carriages, but in this case they are drawn by centaurs, not just horses. Um, you know, the medical terminology and jargons it's like seem a little bit further ahead than what we would have been in 19th century, but at the same time, certainly not quite up to the standards of today. Uh, this book is kind of structured in a little bit of a, well, the first three chapters have to do with specific monster girls that have a specific problem. The first one focuses on a centaur who fights in the arena. The second one, it features a mermaid girl who sings in the canal ways. And the third one features what they are calling a flesh golem. Now, this is my first experience with a golem made of flesh, but uh, pretty much it means the same thing. It's a, basically a corpse that's had a magic scroll inserted into it to reanimate it. Um, dealing with the fact that she's lost an appendage and needs the doctor to restitch it on. However, her story kind of feeds into the fourth and final chapter, which, well, it kind of finds our characters having to deal with bandits who are ex-mercenaries who have taken monsters hostage. It's So, in the first five pages of this book, a girl, I mean, well, she's married, so she's a woman. She's a cow woman, like, literally, like, she's a female minotaur, basically. So, I guess, essentially, they look like women, only they've got a few cow parts. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, the first five pages have her having her breasts being fondled by Dr. Glenn, and then he starts feeling her ears, which uh, eventually lead to her having a rousing orgasm. That's the first five pages. Later on, the um, mermaid girl, who is young, about 14, um, well, Dr. Glenn has to treat her, and one of the things that he does is he has his finger in her gill slit, which you can all sort of probably fill in the blanks of what that's sort of an allusion to, or a metaphor for, or a, yeah. The, you know, here's the thing. I am, as much as, like, I'm not against Eshi. I know I probably make it sound like I totally am. Um, and, and you know, yeah, I, I guess I do. I make it sound like I'm very against naughty bits. Like, but here's the thing. I don't really mind so much if there's some naughty bits if A, um, we don't have underage kids involved, uh, and B, if the book sort of does something with it that makes sense, like, okay, I don't know how to exactly to say this. I think here's my problem, okay? I thought the way that this book started off 
And really, like, the way that it, you know, was for the first half, I really kind of thought that this was going to be just, you know, each chapter was a new monster girl and ha-ha, monster girl hijinks and ha-ha, look at our, you know, very sexual, uh, you know, sexual sort of discussions that aren't really sexual. I mean, it's a doctor doing his job, but the way that we're going to write it, uh, yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We all know what we're really trying to get at. Um, it probably would be fine if that was the whole book, but the fact that the book then starts to try and get all serious and like bring up sort of the negative effects of war and people that have had their livelihoods been displaced by the war. And then there's like violence and fighting and everything else at the, the tail end of the book. And like, it just kind of feels like this novel doesn't really know what it wants to be. It kind of feels like the author sort of, you know, started off by writing the book with like the idea that, Hey, you know, I'm going to make this sort of like a little sort of like lighthearted romp and the doctor is going to get to touch all these cute monster girls in all sorts of naughty kind of ways. And I'll make them do all sorts of naughty little sounds and, you know, yeah, it'll be lots of fun. And then like halfway through it, he was just kind of like, you know, dang it. I want this book to be a little dark and a little bit more serious. I, I want to, you know, yeah, I want, I want this book to say something. Yeah. No, 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 no. It just doesn't, it, it just feels like weird. It's, it's weird. I, you know, cause like I said, it's like all of a sudden the book just changes. Um, and I mean, yeah, okay. The stories kind of feed into it and, but some of it feels forced. Like the monster girls that you meet early on, they come back and you're kind of like, yeah, I think you're kind of stretching a little bit that they're just suddenly in the picture. I think you just want to keep it going kind of thing. Um, but it, it's, it just feels like there's not a clear idea of what this book wants to be. Um, and, and like I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm not opposed, I'm not opposed to naughty bits, but like, if you want that to be the tone of the book, then just stick with it. I mean, admittedly, I'm probably not going to be into it, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, but but I'm not going to hate on you because you're like, you know what? I want to have really cute monster girls who naughty stuff happens all through the book. I mean, whatever. It's probably not for me to read all the time, but, but I ain't going to like totally hate on you. I'm just going to be like, okay, that's what this book is and fine. But like I said, then all of a sudden you want to get dark and, and, and it just, it doesn't really work. It just stick with one, just stick with one. Um, and I mean, what's really weird to me is that like when I was reading this, I kind of thought that it felt a little bit, um, amateurish, the writing, uh, a little too, um, how, how would I, I put it? Like, again, it's one of those things where the author states the obvious, right? Like for instance, you know, he'll, the, the, the one main character, Safi, who's a Lamia, she's on the front here, you know, she gets Glenn out of a bind and you know that she got Glenn out of a bind because you've just read that she did it. And, and then the, the, the writer says, you know, and who had gotten come to the doctor's aid? Safi. And you're like, no crap, dude. I just read that. Like, no kidding. Really? There, that happened often. And, and I mean, it's, and that's not just the only example, but, uh, you know, like there are other things in the book that I just kind of thought to myself, I was like, you know, in the hands of a slightly better writer, <laughs> th this could, this could have been okay. You know, like, and, and also if I think the book had decided right from the start, are we going to be fun, comedic, naughty, or are we going to be more like serious? Like, you know what this, we're going to talk about post-war and we're going to have like all this kind of stuff. Like it just, I don't know. It didn't seem to quite jive very well for me. Um, and, and I guess it's because when it started off and it was like first five pages, you know, screaming cowgirls, I kind of thought, well, okay, this is what the book's going to be. So when it started not being that, I was kind of like, Ooh, what's happening here? Um, so yeah, kind of a, a, a weird 
sort of twist that this went through. Now, um, probably not a series for me. Uh, I'll admit I will probably not bother picking up any future volumes of this. Um, if you love Monster Girls, you might want to give it a try. Uh, I will say though, um, now I think this is one of the first light novels that I have read that Seven Seas has done exclusively themselves. Uh, I'm looking at my shelf to see if that's a lie. Do, 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 do. I don't see any Seven Seas. Okay. So this is the first light novel from Seven Seas that I have read that has no involvement from say J Novel Club. It's painful at times. Um, every single page is, has editing problems, you know, the improper tenses on words, missing connecting words like thes and as, duplications, you know, she, she, altogether wrong words, like connecting, you know, connecting words that are the wrong connecting word that shouldn't be there at all, or... You know, yeah, this book could have really, really benefited from at least another one or two read throughs for editing, like big time. Um, and it's really disappointing. And I think maybe, you know, as much as I am complaining about how it was written and as much as I am complaining about the fact that, you know, we couldn't quite decide on what exactly we wanted this book to be. Um, I think part of the editing was just like, really took me out of it. And, and like I said, it was often, like, I mean, almost every page has at least one grammatical error that is glaring if you're just reading it. Um, and I'm really disappointed and actually I'm kind of really worried because I have Record of Lotus War to review and it's also by Seven Seas and I really am excited about reading it because I have a crap ton of nostalgic, you know, love for the anime of Lotus War. It was like the first one I ever bought back on VHS. So like, I'm kind of worried now that, you know, Ooh, I don't know. I'm kind of hoping that maybe they put all of their efforts into making Lotus War like pristine. And that's why maybe some things slip through the cracks on this one, like fingers crossed. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, like I, I would be really remiss if I didn't say that, you know what, when you're reading this, like if you read this, um, the editing, oh man, like, like I said, like there's, it's so obvious. It's not even like, and it's not, and it's not just like, okay, two or three, I'll let it slide. You know, a lot of them have two or three, you know, but man, there's a lot, like a lot, like even more than I would say, like the first volume of Rising of the Shield Hero. And, and we've talked a little bit about that. So, I mean, wow. Yeah. Like seven C's. I'm a little like, I don't know. Like I said, I, you know what? I don't, I don't know if this is the first go at like doing one, a light novel exclusively themselves. Um, but like I said, you know, the, the writing is a little bit pedantic, but that could be just the, the Japanese author. So, I mean, I'm not arguing the translation. I'm just saying like the editing, the grammar, it, it needed some work. It really did. Um, and like I said, when you've got a book that at least for me, um, you know, content wise was a little like, Ooh, okay. Um, to have the editing be a problem to keep pulling me out of the book and having me have to reread a sentence, just being like, what are they really trying to say here? It just, yeah, it took away from the reading experience. It really did. Um, so yeah, like, you know what? I, I, I'm sitting here thinking like, I'm really trashing on this book and I really try not to. I think anybody who watches these videos on a regular occasion knows that generally speaking, I try to find good in every book that I read. And like, I'm not saying that I despise buys this book. It's just, I kind of wish that it, you know, like I said, I just kind of wish that it had decided what it wanted to do and just owned that as opposed to kind of dancing around all sorts of different places. And, uh, I just didn't think the writing was as strong as it could have been. Uh, it may have been stronger if it had decided thematically what kind of monster girl book it wanted to be right from the get go and just stayed with that. 
So those are my conflicted views on Monster Girl Doctor. Like I said, I gotta be honest, I'm not gonna be picking up any more of this series. Uh, if you've liked things like Monster Musume, you might wanna check out this first volume. Um, in fact, it's funny, the author goes on and on in the afterward about how he was created this story idea when he was watching Monster Musume, that he wrote it while listening to the soundtrack of Monster Musume. Like, I mean, yeah, he's pretty Monster Girl obsessed and in particular with Monster Musume, so... If you love that series, you might want to check this out, but, you know, like I said, be forewarned, if you think you're just going in for fun, light, eshy stuff, it's not all that. If you think you're going in for somebody who's doing a serious take on this, well, it's not all that either. So, you got to take a bit with a bit. Now, for my next review, I'm going to be reviewing another brand new number one volume, one that I was excited about reading the more of you that have already had a chance to read it and tell me how good it is, I am truly thrilled now to give it a try. And that is going to be The Saga of Tanya the Evil. Yeah, I just love the title of this one. I just, yeah. Um, so that's going to be my next review. We're going to be like uh, Lolly, Death and Destruction and Railing Against a Cruel God. Yeah. This sounds like totally up my alley. That'll be my next review. So if you love light novels and you're brand new to the channel, you might want to consider subscribing. I do two to three reviews every single week, as well as a weekly countdown of the top 10 best-selling light novels in Japan. Thank you so much for joining me in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.